not a clinician. I'm a hardcore scientist. And uh, today I'm here to talk about the therapeutic adult stem cells and realizing their uh, biological properties. Um, this, I mean, just before starting, I thought, like, you know, this makes sense. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Um, my first two slides are to, just to scare you on uh, the disease burden in India. By 2020, India will have the largest cardiovascular disease burden in the world, and already 45 million patients are suffering, accounting to one-fifth of all deaths. And um, there are about 20 million diabetics in India, and 6.5% of the Indian population is suffering from like, you know, some kind of neurological conditions. And cancer accounts to about 3.3% of the disease. So to sum up, like, you know, it is to say no region of the globe is untouched by this burden, and no individual is unaffected by this global battle. And uh, it is estimated that there are around uh, 150 lakh uh, chronic cases of COPD in India, and 9 million of the world's blind live in India. So, you know, this is just to emphasize that, like, you know, because of this vast population, there is always this need of uh, introducing modern and advanced, like, you know, therapeutic options to manage different diseases. And typically, the scientific remedies, like, you know, combating these diseases have been either by you know, the use of drugs or by removal of the diseased tissue or by transplantation of the donor, uh, uh, the donated organ or by uh, the last one, the last approach has been the regenerative medicine. So what is regenerative medicine? It is the replacement of de degenerated cells by implantation of new cells that are supposed to repopulate the damaged areas to restore the structural integrity and thereby the restoration of the function is proposed. So. These new cells can be either the tissue-specific cells or the mother cells that are nothing but stem cells. Then what are these stem cells? These are unspecialized cells which can be signaled to become specific, lineage-specific cells and which have the capacity to transdifferentiate to different types of tissue-specific stem cells. And they also have this capacity to self-renew and thereby, like, you know, regenerate, repair. Repair is the main function of these stem cells. So talking about the biological properties of these stem cells, they are morphologically, and in fact, like, you know, phenotypically, they are very distinct. And they have also been shown to um, express, uh, you know, very typical cytochemical properties. And upon transplantation, they also induce a very known host immune response. And, you know, they, ha they, they do home, uh, and uh, they have... They also have been shown to have role in in vivo differentiation uh, with the restoration of the functional endpoint. So the next question is, what is a stem cell transplant? I mean, it's again a repetition. Like, you know, it's the infusion of these healthy stem cells that are manipulated outside to replace the diseased or damaged ones. You know, in fact, like, people have also thought that, like, you know, this stem cell therapy um, has, like, you know, some advantages over the routine medical therapies that because the natural, biological, safer, and less likely to have side effects, and they have this capacity to restore function and then and so the quality of life. And now, the next question is, like, you know, where do these stem cells, I mean, the adult stem cells come from? Um, today I'm just talking about only the adult stem cells, and I'm not touching about this embryonic source, which is supposed to be the controversial, you know, uh, subject. So the adult stem cells, again, like, you know, depending on the source, they are classified, like, you know, of either the fetal source or at the time of the birth or the postnatal. Uh, the fetal source being the fetal stem cells, and then at the time of the birth, this umbilical cord blood stem cells and umbilical cord tissue stem cells, amniotic stem cells and placental stem cells, like, you know, have been published. And then the postnatal being uh, adipose-derived stem cells and bone marrow-derived stem cells. Now, yes, I mean, I have been calling all these groups as stem cells, but then they differ, like, you know, because some are unipotent, some are multipotent, some are pluripotent, and some are totipotent. Now, talking about this particular source, bone marrow, bone marrow resides both, like, you know, the mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. During the past 50 years, intensive studies into characteristics of hematopoietic stem cell transplantation immunology with the emergence of new suppressants and anti-infective drugs have significantly improved the clinical results of the uh, transplantation per se. And the next uh, attractive... Uh, uh, stem cell population, like, you know, for the clinical therapy, you know, have been this mesenchymal stem cells because of their ability to differentiate and also to provide 
trophic support and modulate innate immune response. Uh, the other type, like, you know, which we all need to know is this particular source from uh, the umbilical, umbilical cord blood and umbilical cord tissue. This is a traditional discard. Otherwise, like, you know, it's a byproduct at the time of the birth process. But then, um, you know, in uh, 1970, you know, the, uh, a, uh, a single group in the U.S., like, you know, have discovered uh, that this umbilical cord blood is the richest source of multipotent stem cells, which have been shown to have the therapeutic value. And next is the peripheral blood uh, source. Peripheral blood also resides stem cells, but then the percentage, like, you know, the occurrence is very, very low. The stem cell occurrence is very, very low in this particular source. But then the source is easy to collect, you know, than the, uh, the uh, bone marrow source and less invasive treatment also. So it's not all about like, you know, talking that like, you know, this stem cell therapy is available, available because there, there is uh, evidence that like, you know, there are about uh, uh, 86 registered clinical trials with stem cells and then heart attack and then like, you know, combating these vascular diseases and thousands, like, you know, 2,218 studies of uh, these stem cell therapies and then like, you know, combating these cancers. Like, so, you know, you name any disease, like, you know, the clinical trials have been registered worldwide. Uh, you know, uh, addressing that particular uh, disease manifestation. So evident, like, you know, evidently these stem cells have very unique features and uh, they're naive and upon inducement, like, you know, uh, they, they become a lineage specific uh, 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 phenotype and the availability is definitely mixed. So th these are some of the diseases, like, you know, that or, I mean, are treatab treatable by stem cell transplantation, which are in practice, especially leukemias, lymphomas, tissue repairs and burns, and ocular surface disorders, and peripheral vascular diseases. And then uh, the diabetes, stem cell therapies for diabetes, rheumatic, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and skin rejuvenation, and spinal cord injuries are all considered as experimental in nature. And we do have, like, you know, um, culturing and harvesting the stem cells for research is different, but for clinical application, it is totally altogether a different ballgame. 